Hi everyone, as requested, we have a set of part 2 RCSI nursing aptitude test questions for you, which included 25 questions and answers, for those preparing for aptitude test Ireland. Besides, each answer comes with an answer reference, and that will help you to answer any other questions related to the same topic. We recommend you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 1. Who will you inform first if there is a shortage in supplies in your shift? Option A. Nursing assistant. Option B. Purchasing personnel. Option C. Immediate nurse manager. Option D. Supplier. Answer is option C. Immediate nurse manager. When supply counts run low, managing and tracking inventory requires careful consideration. So it is better to inform the immediate nurse manager to manage the supply shortage. Welcome to HR Stride Medical from hrstride.com, where the nurses come to get inspired. If you haven't subscribed yet, you are missing out. Question 2. A solution contains 12.5 gram of glucose in 0.25 liter. What is the percentage concentration of this solution? Option A, 5%. Option B, 20%. Option C, 10%. Option D, 25%. Answer is option A, 5%. Concentration as percentage by mass is calculated as Mass of solute divided by mass of solvent multiple by 100 That means mass of solute equals 12.5 gram Mass of solvent is 0.25 liter equals 250 milliliters Therefore 12.5 gram divided by 250 milliliters multiple by 100 Equals 5% Question 3 which of the following would indicate an infection? Option A, hot, sweaty, a temperature of 36.5 degrees Celsius, and bradycardic. Option B, raised WBC, elevated blood glucose, and temperature of 36.0 degrees C. Option C, temperature of 38.5 degrees Celsius, shivering, tachycardia, and hypertensive. Option D, hypotensive, cold and clammy, and bradycardic. Correct answer is option C. The temperature of 38.5 degrees Celsius, shivering, tachycardia, and hypertensive. Question 4. If you suspect abuse is happening to someone, and it is not serious enough to involve the police straight away, who should you inform? Option A, no one, it is up to the adult at risk to raise the alert. Option B, a manager with safeguarding responsibility, if within an organization, or adult social care directly, if you are a member of the public. Option C, the adults next of kin. Option D, everyone with caring responsibility for the adult. Option B is the right answer. A manager with safeguarding responsibility, if within an organization, or adult social care directly, if you are a member of the public. If you suspect abuse is happening to someone, and it is not serious enough to involve the police, Better to inform a manager with safeguarding responsibility, if within an organization, or adult social care directly, if you are a member of the public. Question 5. You are caring for a patient in isolation with suspected Clostridium difficile. What are the essential key actions to prevent the spread of infection? Option A. Regular hand hygiene and the promotion of the infection prevention link nurse role. Option B. Encourage the doctors to wear gloves and aprons to be bare below the elbow, and to wash hands with alcohol hand rub. Ask for cleaning to be increased with soap-based products. Option C, ask the infection prevention team to review the patient's medication chart and provide regular teaching sessions on the five moments of hand hygiene. Provide the patient and family with adequate information. Option D, all of the above. Right answer is option D. All the above answers are correct. To prevent the spread of Clostridium infection you have to practice good hand hygiene, clean the environment, surface, spills, accidents, and use PPE. We encourage you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. 
Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test, and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 6. In your opinion, what factors are essential in demonstrating supportive communication to patients? Option A. Listening, clarifying the physical needs of the patient using closed questions. Option B. Listening, clarifying the physical needs of the patient using open questions. Option C. Listening, clarifying the concerns and feelings of the patient using open questions. Option D. Listening, reflecting back on the patient's concerns and providing a solution. Option C is the right answer. Listening, clarifying the concerns and feelings of the patient using open questions. The factors that are essential in demonstrating supportive communication are listening, clarifying the concerns and feelings of the patient using open questions. Question 7. As you visit your patient during rounds, you notice a thin child who is shy and not mingling with the group who seem to be visitors of the patient. You offered him food, but his mother told you not to mind him as he is not eating much while all of them are eating during that time. As a nurse, what will you do? Option A, raise the situation to your head nurse and discuss with her what intervention might be done to help the child. Option B, inform social service desk on suspected case of child neglect. Option C, ignore incident since the child is under the responsibility of the mother. Option D, inform the doctor on the suspected case of child neglect. Option A is the right answer. Raise the situation to your head nurse and discuss with her what intervention might be done to help the child. Nursing action includes to protect a child from physical and emotional harm or danger, ensure adequate supervision, so always raise the situation to your head nurse and discuss with her what intervention might be done to help the child. Question 8. Where can you place infectious linen? Option A, black plastic bag for disposal. Option B, red linen bag designed to hold its integrity even when exposed to heat. Option C, yellow plastic bag for disposal. Option D, red plastic bag designed to disintegrate when exposed to heat. Answer is option D. Red plastic bag designed to disintegrate when exposed to heat. Infected linen must be placed in red water-soluble alginate polythene bag before being placed in the appropriate linen bag, no more than three-fourths full. Question 9. What do you mean by MRSA? Option A. Multi-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Option B. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Option C. Methicillin-resistant Streptococcus aureus. Option D. Multiple resistant Staphylococcus antibiotic. Right answer is option B. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Well, MRSA means Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Question 10. As a nurse, what steps would you take if you had sustained a needle stick injury? Option A. Ask for advice from the emergency department, report to occupational health, and fill in an incident form. Option B. Take blood from patient and self for hep B screening and take samples and form to bacteriology. Call your union representative for support. Make an appointment with your GP for a sickness certificate to take time off until the wound site has healed so you don't contaminate any other patients. Option C. Wash the wound with soap and water. Cover any wound with a waterproof dressing to prevent entry of any other foreign material. Option D. Gently make the wound bleed, place under running water, and wash thoroughly with soap and water. Complete an incident form and inform your manager. Cooperate with any action to test yourself or the patient for infection with a blood-borne virus, but do not obtain blood or consent for testing from the patient yourself. This should be done by someone not involved in the incident. Right answer is option D. Gently make the wound bleed, place under running water, and wash thoroughly with soap and water. Complete an incident form and inform your manager. Cooperate with any action to test yourself or the patient for infection with a blood-borne virus, but do not obtain blood or consent for testing from the patient yourself. This should be done by someone not involved in the incident. Always remember that if you have a needle stick injury, the first thing you have to do is the first aid and followed by you have to complete the incident report 
and submit to the immediate nurse supervisor. Always cooperate with any action to test yourself or the patient for infection with a blood-borne virus, but do not obtain blood or consent for testing from the patient yourself, this should be done by someone not involved in the incident. We recommend you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 11. In your view, what do you expect to assess in a grade 3 pressure ulcer? Option A, open wound showing tissue. Option B, open wound exposing muscles. Option C, open wound exposing bones. Option D, blistered wound on the skin. Answer is option A, open wound showing tissue. We should expect in grade 3 pressure, full thickness skin loss involving damage to or necrosis of subcutaneous tissue that may extend down, but not through underlying fascia. Question 12. What is the reason behind when you instruct your patient to keep on its original container and discard nitroglycerin meds after 8 weeks? Option A, it will have a greater concentration after 8 weeks. Option B, removing from its darkened container exposes the medicine to the light and its potency will decrease after 8 weeks. Option C, it will allow you to check the expiration of the medication. Option D, it will be easy to return back to the pharmacy. Correct answer is option B. Removing from its darkened container exposes the medicine to the light and its potency will decrease after 8 weeks. Always remember that nitroglycerin is a volatile substance which evaporates from tablets if strict precautions are not taken. Question 13. A liter bag of 5% glucose is prescribed over 4 hours. If a standard giving set is used, at what rate should the drip be set? Option A, 24. Option B, 50. Option C, 83. Option D, 60. Right answer is option C. 83. The drop factor is the number of drops in one milliliter solution. For clear fluid it is 20, and for thicker substance is 15. Therefore 1000 milliliters divided by 4 hours, then multiplied by drop factor 20 then divided by minutes per hour. Question 14. When you have to take charge of the next shift of nurses. Few minutes before your shift, the in charge of the current shift is informed that two of your nurses will be absent. Since there is a shortage of staff in your shift, what will you do? Option A, encourage all the staff who are present to do their best to attend to the needs of the patients. Option B, ask your manager if there are qualified staff from the previous shift that can cover the lacking number for your shift while you try to replace new nurses to cover. Option C, refuse to take charge of the next shift. Option D, all of the above. Option B is the correct answer. Ask your manager if there are qualified staff from the previous shift that can cover the lacking number for your shift while you try to replace new nurses to cover. If you are facing problems with a shortage of staff, always ask your manager if there are qualified staff from the previous shift that can cover the lacking number for your shift while you try to replace new nurses to cover. Question 15. If you believe that an adult you know and support has been a victim of physical abuse that might be considered a criminal offense, how do you support the police in an investigation? Option A, explain to the victim that you cannot speak to them unless a police officer is present. Option B, make an accurate record of what the person has said to you. Option C, question the adult thoroughly to get as much information as possible. Option D, take photographs of any signs of abuse or other potential evidence before cleaning up the victim or the crime scene. Correct answer is option B. Make an accurate record of what the person has said to you. Always remember if you want to support the police for the investigation of a victim of physical abuse make an accurate record of what the person has said to you. We encourage you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 16. Who is responsible to dispose of the sharps? 
Option A, whoever used the sharps. Option B, nurse assistant. Option C, registered nurse. Option D, whoever collects the garbage. Option A is the right answer. Whoever used the sharps. Always remember to dispose of all needles and other sharps in the sharp disposal container immediately after they have been used. Question 17. What does AVPU mean? Option A, awake voice pain unconscious. Option B, alert voice pain unresponsive. Option C, awake verbalization pain unconscious. Option D, alert verbalization pain unconscious. Correct answer is option B. Alert voice pain unresponsive. As we know, the AVPU scale is a system by which a healthcare professional can measure and record a patient's level of consciousness. Question 18. A young mother who delivered 48 hours ago comes back to the emergency department with postpartum hemorrhage. What type of PPH is it? Option A, secondary postpartum hemorrhage. Option B, tertiary postpartum hemorrhage. Option C, primary postpartum hemorrhage. Option D, antepartum hemorrhage. Correct answer option A. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage. In particular, the secondary hemorrhage occurs after the first 24 hours of delivery and within six weeks. Question 19. What would make you suspect that a patient in your care had a urinary tract infection? Option A, the patient has spiked a temperature, has a raised white cell count, WCC, has new onset confusion, and the urine in his catheter bag is cloudy. Option B, the doctor has requested a midstream urine specimen. Option C, the patient has a urinary catheter in situ, and the patient's wife states that he seems more forgetful than usual. Option D, the patient has spiked a temperature, has a raised white cell count, WCC, has new onset confusion, and the urine in his catheter bag is cloudy. Answer is option A. The patient has spiked a temperature, has a raised white cell count, WCC, has new onset confusion, and the urine in his catheter bag is cloudy. Urinary tract infections typically occur when bacteria enter the urinary tract. As a result, you can see the patient has developed a spiked temperature, raised white cell count, WCC, new onset confusion, and the urine in his catheter bag is cloudy. Question 20. Which is the most dangerous site for intramuscular injection? Option A, rectus femoris. Option B, ventrogladial. Option C, dorsogladial. Option D, deltoid. Option C is the correct answer. Dorsogladial. We should expect injury of the sciatic nerve due to injection in the dorsogladial muscles of the buttocks. We gently remind you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 21. A 17-year-old patient who was involved in an orthopedic accident is observed not eating the meals that she previously ordered and refuses to take a bath even if she is already in the recovery stage. As a nurse what do you think is the best explanation for her reaction to the accident that happened to her? Option A, regression. Option B, repression. Option C, suppression. Option D, undoing. Right answer is option A. Regression. In general, patients with trauma may be more likely to have regression. So the best explanation for her reaction to the accident will be regression. Question 22. If you were told by a nurse during handover to take standard precautions, what would you expect to be doing? Option A, using appropriate hand hygiene, wearing gloves and aprons when necessary, disposing of used sharp instruments safely and providing care in a suitably clean environment to protect yourself and the patients. Option B, taking precautions when handling blood and high-risk body fluids so that you don't pass on any infection to the patient. Option C, wearing gloves, aprons and mask when caring for someone in protective isolation to protect yourself from infection. Option D, asking relatives to wash their hands when visiting patients in the clinical setting. Option A is the correct answer. Using appropriate hand hygiene, 
wearing gloves and aprons when necessary, disposing of used sharp instruments safely and providing care in a suitably clean environment to protect yourself and the patients. As a nurse, you should know about standard precautions. It contains a set of infection control practices used to prevent transmission of diseases that can be acquired by contact with blood, body fluids, non-intact skin, and mucous membranes. Question 23. An 83-year-old lady just lost her husband. Her brother visited the lady in her house. He observed that the lady is acting okay, but it is obvious that she is depressed. Three weeks after the husband's death, the lady called her brother crying and was saying that her husband just died. She even said, I can't even remember him saying he was sick. When the brother visited the lady, she was observed to be well physically, but was irritable and claims to have frequent urination at night, and she verbalizes that she can see lots of rats in their kitchen. Based on the manifestations, as a nurse, what will you consider as a diagnosis to this patient? Option A, depression. Option B, urinary tract infection leading to delirium. Option C, delayed grieving with dementia. Option D, confusion. Right answer is option B. Urinary tract infection leading to delirium. We should expect delirium and urinary tract infection are very common in the elderly. Therefore initiate workup for urinary tract infection whenever delirium occurs in a patient. Question 24. As a registered nurse in a unit, what would be the priority to a patient with immediately after operation? Option A, airway patency. Option B, pain relief. Option C, blood loss. Option D, urine output. Option A is the correct answer. Airway patency. As you know, maintaining a patient airway is the primary responsibility of the post-operative nurse. Question 25. Dehydration is of particular concern in ill health. If a patient is receiving intravenous, for, fluid replacement, and is having their fluid balance recorded, which of the following statements is true of someone said to be in a positive fluid balance? Option A, the fluid input has exceeded the output. Option B, the fluid output has exceeded the input. Option C, the doctor may consider increasing the four drip rate. Option D, the fluid balance chart can be stopped as positive in this instance means good. Option A is the correct answer. The fluid input has exceeded the output. We should expect in positive fluid balance, the fluid input has exceeded the output. If you find our sample RCSI nursing aptitude test questions and answer reference useful please like our video. More RCSI nursing aptitude test questions will be uploaded in the coming days. To get the notification, consider subscribing our channel. Visit our YouTube channel for more clear-cut medical subjects. Thanks for watching.